So, bringing stuff into Keyshot, formerly Bunk Speed Hypershot, is actually pretty damn easy. I'm just going to click Import Model. They've got a slightly new, shiny interface that doesn't contain as much red as the old one did, which is nice, because that red really didn't do it for me, to be honest. Okay, now I'm on my desktop, so I should be able to find my tiny-int1, which is quite a small file, especially compared to Serenity over there. So I'm going to click Open, and just click OK. Now, let's hope that it's going to look OK, because sometimes if they've been through the threshing mill, they can look a little bit lumpy. There we go, that's exactly what I wanted, so I'm now a happy cookie. Now, quick navigation tips, okay. Left mouse button is going to make you dolly about. Middle is going to make you pan about. And alt and right, and then left and right, is going to make you zoom in or out. Okay, it's all fairly easy stuff. So, we've got three materials on this, from what I can remember. So, if I just go into my material library here, you'll see it at the top. Now, this is 1.9 in 2. Um, things are slightly different, so we'll have to go over that when we get there. Um, you can see we've got a lot of artifacts going on. Well, we've also got some overlap. I'm not especially concerned about that. Now then, I'm going to go to carbon fibre just here, left click on it and then right click on the parts inside the wings and as you see they do that which is quite pleasing they've got different ones here as well so carbon fibre there or there we can even have circular meshes which is also quite pleasing I think you'll discover Okay, now, oh, I'm pressing the wrong button, ha ha ha, silly on me. In glass, we want a dark tint, stick it there. For metals, we want something like brushed steel, for there. Or we could even go to gun metal. Well, gun metal is, as you can see, very shiny. So we'll have brushed steel. And the good thing is that if you're not too keen on the colour, say you want to add a bit more blue or yellow or red or whatever, if I just double click on it, I can now change my colour options a little bit. I could maybe add this a little more blue. Like that. Okay, so for example, if you wanted to make um, an Imperial Bodyguard tie interceptor, which was the red one, I believe. I'm not very good with colours, but I believe this is the whole red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, so red will be on the left at the top. And there you have a red TIE Fighter. Now then, obviously, or maybe obviously not, depending on how you look at it, we can't sadly use this see-through thing for that, even though it looks lovely. So. Let's see what others we have that we can just drag onto it straight away. Well, first of all, let's double click on it and just see. So we've got diffuse, specular, ambient. We've got a texture. We can modulate the shadows. Let's see. God, I love this. It's so nice. I don't even want to change it. I just like it the way it is. Ah, sod it. You know, that is really nice and I'm very happy with it. So, again, what I'm going to do now then is... God, I love this renderer. I'm going to go over to my environment, sorry, my main, and open environment image. Now, the new key shot comes with stacks of lovely new environments. So, I'm going to go for perhaps an overhead softbox. See how that looks. Not a lot of difference. Oh wait, there it goes. Actually, that's very, very nice. Or we could have a look at Car Studio Dark. Again, give it a minute. 
or we could go with bright or even medium that's urban let's have a look jewelry hmm I love messing around with these like so much that's a jewelry tent I want to go with the car medium car studio bright dark medium let's have a look at that there we go and you really can't complain at that as a render considering the amount of time we have spent on it which is <laughs> 5 minutes 35 seconds according to my watch I'm certainly not complaining. Now for our backplate image we can change that as well if we want just about anything at all. So if we wanted a 3D Palace logo or something like that we can have it. Which is pretty damn nice. Now whilst we can render this, which would take a little while but not too long, um, we can also change some settings in this just in the viewport. So if I enable depth of field and then pick focus point I could choose that as my focus point and now if you watch it'll automatically calculate depth of field based on this port, port part here then again I could pick this as my focus point and this is going to be calculated for depth of field and when I'm done all I've got to do is go to file save screenshot or if I want to render I've got to adjust these settings and then go and have a sit down because it will take a little while to render this out. So, I hope you're happy with how this went. Um, I think it looks very, very nice. I'm very pleased with it considering it took ooh, six hours, well, less than six hours to make and that includes the time it took to eat some lunch. Um, if you have an interest in any other 3D Palace tutorials that might go with this set, please check in our shop. Um, you may be interested to know that as you've reached the end of this video tutorial um, if you type in TIE Fighter, one word, and then 20 you can get a 20% discount on something from the shop if you just want to go and try something else so, you know, you'll save yourself quite a bit of money depending on what you buy um, sets I'd recommend personally you'd probably enjoy looking at something like if you like this Firefly Serenity model uh, tutorial, ATMT probably, Crux definitely, and have a look at the free Badger set because that's really really nice too. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, I look forward to seeing you in MT number 7. Bye bye for now.